Welcome to the Q Podcast. Q is about conversation. If we're really concerned about ending poverty, we've got to be more concerned about creating justice. Our cultural products as Christians need to both defy and resonate with the culture. And God's doing amazing things. His church is expanding. His church is growing. It's not what's the purpose of my life. It's what is the purpose that's been assigned. Stay curious. Think well. Advance good. This is Q. Welcome to another edition of the Q Podcast. I'm Gabe Lyons, and today we're talking about Gen Z. Maybe you've heard this term. Maybe you've heard the term Zillennials. That's something that is a little new for me, but it's the term some people use to talk about that generation born just after Millennials, 1994 to 2000. But Gen Z uh, technically is born 1997 through 2012 or 15. So they're still figuring out when this next generation mark is going to start. But what we know is it's the youngest generation among us. They're 6 to 24 years old. There's almost 68 million of Gen Z in the U.S. It's our teens, our preteens, those who are in college right now and just graduating from college. It's a generation that has a different look at culture. And we wanted to get into that. And so we invited two people to be a part of a conversation with us at our recent Q&A event. It was Sadie Robertson Huff. Maybe you've heard of Sadie, formerly of Duck Dynasty. She has her own podcast now, Live Original, Live Fearless Books, so many things. So many of Gen Z listen to Sadie Robertson Huff. And so we wanted to hear what they're listening for and what they're resonating with. We know so many leaders, especially in academic institutions, in churches, entrepreneurs, business owners who are hiring this generation are trying to understand their approach. What are they thinking about? What are they reacting to? How far is the pendulum going to swing away from the millennial generation? And I think in this conversation, you're going to be deeply encouraged because not only do we have Sadie Robertson Huff with us, but also Gabrielle Odom. And She's unique. She's 19 years old, a recent high school graduate. She's already a speaker. She's a leader in her generation. She serves as an ambassador with Sadie for Live Original, but she's somebody that's so compelling. She's so fired up for the Word of God. She cares so much that her generation goes back to the basics of the Word of God. Anytime people hear Sadie or Gabby, they walk away going, I've got such hope for this next generation. And so I think today, as you listen in, you're going to have hope. And once you hear these, conversations. We're going to have about 10 minutes for you to listen to on this podcast, but you can actually watch an entire conversation for an hour and 15 minutes with these two and two others talking about their generation and describing for us what it's like to be them, what it's like to be them and interact with the church of today, what it's like to be them and interact with technology and one another, what they're missing and what they feel like they're gaining and gleaning as a new generation. And so you can do that. It's no cost to you. For the next 30 days, you can do a free trial of Q Media's platform. We have thousands of people that are part of this community listening and learning, not only alone, but together with their kids, with their parents, with their church staff, with their college staff, with with anybody that's interested in thinking well about major issues that are important for Christians to discern well. And so you can do that at qideas.org slash QA. And you can not only see this topic, but we had so many other topics we talked about at that event, and you'll have access to all of them, everything from censorship and conspiracy theories to talking about really what it looks like right now for people to walk away from Christianity. Also, church history. We talked about prayer and revival. We talked about mental health and that crisis that so many leaders are walking through, and how do we engage it? So there's so much more for you. At Q Media. So if you've been a Q Podcast subscriber for a long time, as many of you have, faithfully listening to these conversations and these talks, I invite you, take the next step. There's so much more content and there's so much more coming. Our plans this year for Q Media are amazing. We're going to be rolling out new shows. They're going to be happening weekly and you are not going to want to miss exclusive content only available at Q Media. So check that out at qideas.org slash QA. But for now, let's listen to the next generation. Let's listen to them tell us how they're feeling about things, and what they need. Let's listen. Let me, let me ask a very specific, more practical question. I'll start with you, Gabrielle, because you are fresh out of high school. But there's a lot of questions from leaders who are asking, you know, kind of functionally, how should church youth groups operate to <laughs> produce a generation that really hungers for the things of God? Um, I know historically, I mean, if you look back over the last couple decades, there's a lot of stories to be told of Christian youth groups 
at the Christian church that feel like they're gamified and there's a lot going on that's fun, a lot of activities, but a lot of kids that don't feel like they're going deeper. I mean, this yeah. is anecdotal, but you look totally. at some other faiths, like the Jewish faith, or you look at uh, the Mormons, what they ask of the next generation to get up at five in the morning and study their book and yeah. to memorize this and to live this out. Or you think about Mormons go off after they graduate, you know, for two years in a buddy system and they're doing evangelism. I mean, Absolutely. these religions are asking a lot of yes. the next generation. Yeah. Are we asking enough in our church? And if we're not, functionally, how would you advise a pastor to say, hey, let's start to reorg the way we think about youth ministry? <laughs> he smiles a bit. Just, this is like soft boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, it just amps me up because I always tell pastors, like, we don't need another petting zoo. Like, we don't need petting zoos and the fluff and all the giveaway. Like, every youth group, they all have petting zoos and bouncy houses and, like, all this extra stuff. And what I love about my pastor back at home, my youth pastor, he would, it was so simple. We would open up the Word of God. He would teach us the Bible. We would meet together. We were doing fellowship together. And young people showed up because we were investing in the things of God. And I, I just am sad that there is so many pastors that think the next generation needs all these crazy extra like whack stuff. Like I'm like, man, we can get rid of all the crazy illustrations and crazy fluff and resort back to what has always been true. And that is what my generation is craving for. Like I say it all the time, but we need clarity yeah. because the rest of the world isn't giving it to us. And so we need clarity. We need something that is absolutely true. And, and yeah, like young people aren't asking for all the things they want. I mean, to what Grant said, like they want people that will just invest in them and so to have a pastor who, man, has come alongside me and taught me like the hard things. I mean, we would sit down and like, let's talk about Calvinism. Let's talk about like women in the church. Like we want to dive into it. These young people want to know the hard things. They're not afraid. And I think there's this misconception that young people are afraid of hard truth. And so in that, then we just give a ton of soft truth. <laughs> it's like, no. Young people are getting hard truth from every other area of society. Like, they are talking about hard things in school. Yeah. We are having conversations yeah. around injustice that is not at, like, a super elementary level. Kids are talking about Marxism. They're talking about, like, these big worldviews and ideologies. And so, man, like, pastors, let's dig into it because young people are craving truth. Yeah. They really are. And I just don't think we often believe it. And mm. so, man, like, if we believe that this is true, if we believe in the power of God, then let's bring young people into that and not just give all the soft and the fluff. Yeah. <laughs> I think I agree with you. I think also we're craving truth, but we also are truly craving community. And I would say we have so much entertainment. We're on entertainment overload. We have Instagram, we have Twitter, we have Facebook, we have Snapchat, we have TikTok, we have Netflix. We have, I mean, literally, you could go on and on and on and on. And on. We're just very entertained, but we need... We need community. My yeah. great grandma was actually sharing me. I said, what's the biggest difference between our generations? And she was like, y'all's entertainment is so different because she said, used to, if it was a baseball game, our family would get to go to a baseball game to enjoy a baseball game together as a family as something fun that we would do as a family. And it wasn't about the players. It was about us doing something fun as a family. She said, if a band, we were going to go watch a band. It wasn't because of the singer. It was because we wanted to go dance. Mm -hmm. It was more because you wanted to experience something. You wanted to do something fun together. But now it's about the person or it's about the, you know, the, the fame. It's about the hype. It's about the entertainment. And I think church can kind of become the same way. It's like instead of going to actually be in fellowship and community and push one another and talk about hard things and confess things and talk about truth, we're just going to be entertained by the yeah. pastor or the worship leaders or the lights. And none of that is bad, the pastor or the worship leaders or the lights. But that's why we're going. And it's not because we're truly desiring to have a community as a church, then we're missing it. Yeah. And so I think we'd be quicker to listen to truth if we had a relationship with the person who was speaking it totally. to us. Mm -hmm. Which, 
I love that you said the importance of community because there's a lot of young people that are super lonely. Like when we talk about depression and anxiety, they're lonely, they're isolated to their bedroom and then that's leading to greater temptation, greater sin. And so what happens in community is encouragement. What happens in community is real confession. And it's something I'm seeing at the church I'm at now. Like our coffee shop is in the smack like dab middle of our church and everyone comes Monday through Sunday. Like everyone's at our church. Like we just hang out at church. Whether if it's the high schooler who's doing school online or the person working remote or people who actually work at our church, like we're all just hanging out there. And it really does like create this community that isn't just about Sunday, but we're like actually doing life on life together. And man, that will change someone's world. Like young, old, all of it. Like we crave relationship and we need it. And so, man, that's important. Well, one thing I'm encouraged by, it feels like 20 or 30 years ago, a lot of the thinking for the next generation was they were being encouraged that their work as a Christian in the world was to be a full-time minister Mm. or to be a part of a local church staff. And it does seem like that has started to move towards more and more people realizing that their calling can be in any of these different channels of culture, right? Media, entertainment, entertainment, fashion, government, you know, you name it, education, and that they carry this with them. Um, And our final question here is you think about the future and your generation and you're speaking to your generation. So we're not talking to the 45-year-olds now, but you're talking to the 20-year-old right now who's in college, who's who's trying to figure all this out. They've they've been through youth groups that maybe they didn't go as deep as they wish they would have, um, but they're aspiring for more and they're having a hard time like seeing a vision for where this could go, would you paint some vision about what happens if your generation really takes up the truth, really starts to see what's true in this world and what's evil and what's falsehood and starts to live that out? Are you seeing an opportunity instead of the church going into this decline that everybody assumes is going to happen? Do you see an opportunity for this to change dramatically if the supernatural starts to descend on this generation? Absolutely. 100%. Oh, yeah. I mean... To be honest, if you look at the number of people who are truly tuning into church, I mean, for instance, Passion Conference this year, only 18 to 25 year olds are allowed to come and there were 65,000 young people there for New Year's Eve and New Year's Day. That's huge. I mean, that's amazing, you know? If you look at all these conferences, if you look at all these things, What needs to happen, though, what has to happen is what we talked about. It can't just be passion. It can't just be at cute conference. It can't just be on a Sunday. We have to, as a generation, take responsibility. And that's kind of what you talked about of like, are we asking too little? Yes, I think we are, because we need to say, you have to go cultivate a relationship with Jesus. Like Christine was saying, you need to be on your knees. You need to be in your prayer closet. You need to be reading your word and developing a relationship with God. Because if we did that, then yes. I mean, we will see a rise. Because there are a lot of people watching Christianity and a lot of people listening to Christianity, but not a lot of people actually dropping their net and following Jesus. Yeah. But if that does happen and that can happen in an instant, then yes, I think for sure we're not going at a decline. We're actually going to see an amazing thing happen because sometimes when attention gets so bad, it gets so hot, that's when you have to decide, am I going to go with Jesus? Am I going to go with the world? 2020 has been tension. It has been hot. And I think in the next year, we will see our young people going to continue on that path of depression and loneliness and hopelessness, or are they going to say, what am I going to do with my loneliness? What am I going to do with my hopelessness? And maybe find Jesus in that. And we see this really huge rise of the young church. Yeah. Well, it's, it's exciting because like, I believe in Gen Z, but not because of Gen Z. Like I believe in a God who wants to exalt himself and magnify himself and glorify himself here on earth. And so like all throughout scripture, God has set this rescue mission in motion that we get to be in the midst of. Like revelation hasn't come. And so we like get to be in the midst of this rescue mission that is taking place. And so an encouragement to the next generation is like, I just want to be found faithful. Like, I, I don't have all the answers. We don't have all the answers. But when I look back on all the movements that are 
going on fire. Like when I look back on everything in COVID and all that, like I want the next generation to be found faithful and it's only gonna happen by submitting to God Almighty. And and I've been sitting in Joshua, of course, as as Joshua's leading the next generation into the promised land and in Joshua 24, as he closes and he's charging the Israelites um, to incline their heart to the Lord God of Israel, that his voice they would obey and his, his voice only they would serve and that they would throw off the false gods. And so like, that's my heartbeat of, of for this next generation, that we would throw off gods of comfort, gods of, of pornography, gods of depression, gods of comparison, and incline our heart to the Lord God that his voice only we shall serve, his voice only we shall obey. Like there's a lot of noise right now. Yeah. And so might we incline our heart to the Lord God of Israel and serve him only and be found faithful in that. Wow. All right, I hope you enjoyed that. Isn't that some energy? I mean, that's what we need, youthful energy. I was just laughing when Gabby said, I always tell pastors we don't need another petting zoo. How true is that? That so many times we look at our youth, even I have teenagers, and and we just think they're kids. The reality is, if you look back when you were 17 years old, you didn't want to be treated like a kid. You wanted to be challenged. You wanted people to believe in you and have confidence in you and equip you for the world you were about to walk into. And I think today was just a reminder that that's the way that we want to pursue this. Sadie also said this, which I found fascinating. We're craving truth, but we're also truly craving community. So they care about truth, but they want to do this together. I think technology has created some really new lines in this generation to where they have access to all of it, but they also understand something's missing in it. They also see the way it's affected their older friends and their parents, and they're pursuing authentic community. They want to be together. They want to have conversation. They want to relearn some things that maybe we've forgotten in our current moment. And so let's be encouraged by this. Let's be encouraged by the next generation. Will you pray for them right now? Will you just take a moment and pray for your kids, for the next generation in the church? They're going to encounter so many different issues that you and I have never faced, never had to navigate through. They need scripture. They need truth and they need our prayers. So just like I know my parents and my grandmother prayed for me all the time, let's be the kind of generation, if you're older like me and you're Gen X, that's praying for the next generation and praying that God will not only raise up these leaders, but give them the courage, the boldness, the discernment, and the wisdom that goes so far beyond their years as they lead well in this cultural moment. I hope you'll not only listen to this, but you'll share it with friends, maybe share it with your kids, encourage them, share it with those that are in this age group, but also subscribe to this podcast, the Q Ideas podcast, and then go and watch this with your kids. If, if you have kids, teenagers, if you have a youth group leader that you care about, somebody that works with college students, this is the perfect conversation to invite them to watch, listen to, and respond to, to see, does this resonate with them? Have they heard these same conversations in their circles? And you can do that by going to qideas.org slash QA. And for free, for the next 30 days, you'll have access to this hour and 15-minute conversation. You'll also hear so many of these other conversations that are relevant for this year, for 2021, if you are a Christian and you're trying to think well and advance good. I hope you'll do that. We love hosting these conversations for you, but be sure you take the conversation and now host it for others. I hope you have a wonderful week.